Hello, my atomically enthusiastic friends. Have you ever heard of an anion? Milestone evidence for anions, a third kingdom of particles. Well, there was always two particles. There was a, something that was concussive and explosive and something that was demure and did nothing whatsoever. Now, anions don't fit into either of those two known particle kingdoms. To find them, physicists had to erase the third dimension. Well, I think I can show you anions. I can show you something that's a third dimension of light. I'll show you right now. Okay, this is a published paper by Dana and Najjar and this goes back oh six months or so ago now she says every last particle in the universe from a cosmic ray to a quark is either a fermion or a boson well no that's not correct these categories divide the building blocks of nature into two distinct kingdoms now researchers have discovered the first examples of a third particle kingdom well first of all or, um, electron flood theory says that there is only electrons. They make everything, 100% of everything. And I will show you right now, when they say an electron is, here's what an electron is, and it makes a photon. An electron is a particle that goes down this way and exceeds and it gets a bunch of energy it comes down this way and it loses its energy and it comes back to this and it starts to accumulate energy and it just keeps doing this back and forth and one of them is has no energy and one of them has all the energy now that's an electron that's a symbol for an electron now this is a photon is another one right next to it it's doing exactly the same thing Only this one has the dark side here. It's attracted to this. This one is attracted to this. This is the photon. Something like that. I don't know how they do it. But it's anyway, it's, this is the photon, and this bounces off of you. The electron, on the other hand, which is this, will try to incorporate into whatever it can find. If it can find another photon particle, that's fine. If it hits a, a, a piece of stone or wood or your face, it warms it up because it's, it goes into you. Not, not extremely invasive, but if enough of them hit you at the same time, you're in trouble. <laughs> now, you could still get very, very warmed up by having light hit you, but most of it's going to bounce off. You know, some of it will push electrons into you, absolutely. But this, all of them are going to go into you if they just come at you like this one shot at a time. Now, this, well, let me get organized here, and we're going to, I'm going to show you about fermions and bosons. That's what she's saying, that's the only two particles that exist. No, and I can show you, we did the experiments, and I can show you fermions, I can show you bosons, and then I can show you a particle nobody has ever seen before and it fits exactly into what they are talking about for anion so who knows all right well let's just start here for just for the beginning here it says to understand quantum kingdom think of drawing of loops imagine two indistinguishable like the electrons take one loop and go just like i did it goes up it goes down it comes back up and down come back one side has power one side has no power now Nothing seems to have changed, indeed, in mathematical, or anyway, it talks about this. What, what you, all you have to care about is if the wave functions are identical, your quantum particles are bosons. All right? If they are off by a factor of one, you have fermions. All right? they, I don't know why they call these identical wave factors, and they're off by a factor of one. These push against each other. These don't care about being next to anybody. They want to be next to everybody. And they'll, they can be right next to each other. They could be right next to the white guy. They want to be next to, to, to the explosive part. But they can separate. You can break them right here and break them. And I can show you breaking them. Absolutely no question whatsoever. And here it comes. Just really quickly, they, they talk about a boson and a fermion. That's all it is, is a muon is the boson, and an electron neutrino, electron shower, is the fermion. These explode. These are demure. They do nothing. They just are passive. These are, in the real world, these are dark matter. The things they've been looking for forever is dark matter. Is these. They attach to the electrons, just as I showed here. There's the dark matter. There's the electron. 
Let's look a little closer. All right, that's exactly what they're looking for. Exactly. First, I'm going to just set it up for you. Let me take a second. Pulsed red laser. There's actually a particle back in here, but it controls a huge wave. I mean, a huge range of magnetic influence. That's why you see a wave, but it's really a particle. And here comes the particle because we created a venturi down here, which is like airplane wings. And it had to force that big ball to crush itself down to its particle. And that is where the particle starts to show itself. And here is the particle right here, exactly right there. Well, right here, you'll see the particle. Then right there, the particle actually separates. And here is the particle. That's the particle. All right, just like I showed you right here. There it is. Rip, 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 rip. There it is. Nobody ever knew this black particle was attached to the, to the light. They always thought the electron was just an electron. A photon was just, I don't really even know what they think a photon is, to be perfectly honest with you. But I know a photon is electrons back to back. And the green ones are identical to the red ones, identical to the blue ones, so they're all the same. It's just one spinning faster than the other. And I can prove that too. Now, what else can I prove after coming through this Venturi? Well, first of all, light is a particle within a wave. So the wave is ahead of the particle because it's coming through. It's just like having a big rubber ball, but there's a particle in the front of it that makes this region of influence in front of it become a wave. That's all it is. And then by accelerating, it pulled it right out of the wave. Now, what happened here? We saw it show up as a box of particles, which is a back-to-back -back electrons. Guess what? Those back-to-back -back electrons separated. Not only did they separate, they fall apart 100%. And I'm going to show you that right now. And when they did, in this range right here, we get this. All right, that's coming at us. I'm going to show you this in a lot better detail because I can show you the anion that they're talking about. I believe. Maybe. Who knows? You know, okay, I'm gonna, I think I can explain this pretty good, to be perfectly honest with you. I'm saying this is an electron, as I showed you before, I believe, in this presentation. That's a photon, back-to-back -back electrons. Muon is the dark part, just, and it's all by itself. It can go away, and it is interact. it's not interactive. It is gravity and dark matter. It pulls things to it. The powerful part is the white part. And the white part is what they would call an electron neutrino, and it creates electron showers as it hits all the other electrons that are in, and it splays them out, which we have seen, and you have seen very clearly. And it creates the showers as it collides with all the other electrons that are also concussive. This is a powerful particle, and all of the other ones that are in the air are also powerful, and they are all Everything has electrons attached to it, so everything is powerful, and it depends on what it's hitting, what color it's going to give off, and so forth. Now, that anion, I believe, I'm going to show you the particle, it came through as a white particle, and then it hit an electron, which is one of these big little round jobbers, and it gave off a cone. And it appears the anion spins in reverse. It's a left-hand spinner instead of a right-hand spinner. And the left hand, it appears to gather the field into itself. Now, this is how we did this. The red laser, pip, 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 pip. there's the acceleration, there's the impact, there's the separation, there's the black balls, which I call the muons, the dark matter, rolling around and going to come back to the concussive fermion, so forth. They call these the bosons. I call them dark matter, muons. They call these the electron showers. All right, now, so we know all this stuff so far, and we know the concussion creates a separation. Now, let's look at this a little deeper because it gets extremely interesting when I throw in this other particle. Remember, all of these particles in my world are spinning to the right, hitting this venturi, some of them are spinning out this way, some of them are coming over the top spinning this way. That's why we get spin, 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 and only one goes this way, one goes that way, bing, 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 and that's what creates these interference patterns. They're not overlaps, this is a single wave, a single slit. Now, 
we can see the they have separated their energy states. Absolutely no question about it. This is where I think they should start to look to harvest the energy because there's nothing but electrons here. That means that's raw, raw, raw energy. Usually you have both of them tacked together and there's not much you can do about it. But mm, I don't know. It looks to me like you got 100% raw energy. All right, here's the deal. This is the Venturi. Light is coming at us. As this light is getting, it's spinning, looking at it this way, it would be spinning in reverse. Coming at us, it's spinning in the right-hand rule. So it's going swish, 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 swish. That's why you're seeing pulse, 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 pulse. Now, so these are basically like separate electrons, you know, or, you know, electron neutrinos, whatever you want to call them, fermions. Now, that one right there, that's the killer. You see that? That's not a right-hand spinner, I don't think. That appears not to be giving off energy. It appears to be consuming energy. Now, is that an antiparticle? Is that a... I don't know what the hell it is. got to be honest with you. This one, that, that one there has got me confused. But this anion thing might shed some light <laughs> on this light. Okay, they claim this represents electrons. Now, photons, electrons, they're right in that same range, and I'm not sure they fully understand them, and I'm not sure I do either, but the, we've seen the boson, which is um, the muon, which is the dark matter in my world, and it, we've seen it surrounded by the particles of electronic you know, explosive particles, which is the fermion, and then that's the boson in the center, muon in the center, electron neutrinos outside, however you want to call them. And then this is a little more energetic, and they start to separate, as we saw, and then they eventually end up like this. And I've seen them in all of these different modes. So I think the experiments with the light we did, Rod Warren and I did, uh, is, is very, very valid. Okay, I, I have to be honest with you. I only thing I can think of is that particle right there is that white spinning reverse spinner. It doesn't have any field surrounding it like the, all of the rest. Of, every other one had. This now appears to be creating its own field, and uh, <laughs> I, I don't know, but but it's certainly not the black ball or the white particle anymore. It's absolutely a different particle. I don't care how you look at it, that is not one of the two basic particles. I close the case on this. It is a third particle. Call it what you want.